Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a Red V from the Heal Project, uh, and today we want to do a video for you with Ignacio, founder and director of the Heal Project. Hey, everybody. Uh, in the midst of everything that's happening with this new virus and um, for those of you who follow the news, everything that's following and all the uncertainty and anxieties around it, uh, we wanted to talk about uh, sex and viruses and how historically we have dealt with times like this and how bigotry has come up. So, yeah. Mm. I mean, we were having a conversation as we often do. Uh, we're supposed to be working and we just like start talking and um, I've been having a lot of anxiety uh, because we're just talking about how people who experience trauma are just experiencing what's happening now. Like I've been in my house for two weeks and haven't left and I've been high, 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 high anxiety and pretty manic, um, trying to just piece together what's happening and figure out what's going on as a consultant, you know, money-wise, health-wise, family, just a lot of things. And um, and one of the things I was telling Red Beat was um, two things um, strongly, really strongly come up for me right now, um, among many, many, many other things, but two things when people panic like this and uh, and there's this pandemic or when the people start getting when i feel like people are going to start getting a little um disruptive uh number one i think about rape it's the first thing i think about i think um, that's what people often use as a uh, control and power and situations uh, and i get this is my my PTSD that comes right up, and it's the, one of the first things I think about. Um, and so I am trying to like center and not be freaked out, constantly thinking that um, I'm you know catastrophizing and going there. Uh, and then the second thing I think of uh, when we were talking, I was like I started thinking about uh, viruses, uh, and I started thinking about HIV. And I was like, oh, but you know, this thing is not a, a, an STI. And then you said, well, HIV is not an STI. And I was like, oh, that's right. And I was like, but now I'm thinking a lot about what is gonna happen, you know, five, six, seven months down the line, a year down the line, because we all know, I mean, I know that uh, this is when we start looking at those farthest the margins and how this is going to be affecting i mean even now who is it going to be affecting and i just think you know we're in the business of sex sexual liberation and sex and so this is where my mind goes sex how is it going to affect people of color poor people people with disabilities um and how are people dealing it with it right now while we're in this state of you know emergency while we're um you know staying what is it shelter in place and all of that so this is where this conversation kind of started happening yeah, yeah absolutely and that's really interesting because um oftentimes when i'm talking about sdis uh, it's very few sdis especially uh the viral ones are exclusively sexually transmitted but there is mm -hmm. there's a lot of history and a lot of context to why we consider some viral infections uh, sexually transmitted and when we don't consider others um, as such and then how we talked about how we talk about them when it comes to having sex uh, i think especially these days uh, personally considering my own context when i want to engage with people on any kind of a social you know um, context especially sex my primary concern is getting the flu not this flu right now it's different but my primary concern is if i get a cold or a flu because first is most likely i'll get a flu or a cold from a partner mm -hmm. and second of all uh it will be the most inconvenient to kind of recover from uh and, and it would be the least i can protect myself against like I, there's a whole lot i can do to not get the cold or flu from a partner, you know. Um, but we don't think about that as a sexually transmitted 
illness, uh, right. we don't freak out uh, when we're thinking about having sex uh, with others. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get the flu. <laughs> so it's right, right. You know, it's very interesting. Um, and so yeah, with HIV, it was very interesting how that just got branded as a right. sexually transmitted illness, and it's t- still to date. That's just how it is. Same with herpes, right? It's like it's branded as a sexually transmitted illness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you were saying something about you, the news head over here. You said that you were looking at something that they were doing some testing or something about... Um... Yeah, so there's a lot of, yeah, on the topic of viruses and bigotry, right? There is a lot of interesting stuff that's happening with this new virus from calling it the Chinese virus and a lot of other very racially charged terms, which I will not repeat because they should not be repeated. But um, they are also trying to do genetic testing and see who is impacted by this virus. Are some people predisposed to it? And I'm not sure what they are looking at, if they're looking at things like people's race, people's gender. It does seem like uh, men are twice uh, as likely to die and in every age group mm-hmm. from this virus, so far from the data. Um, but also there is very interesting uh, conspiracy theories around the world coming out uh, blaming different nations for having created this virus to for like eugenic purposes, which is again like so in- similar to how HIV was the conspiracy theories around HIV. Um, but yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I think about this virus and the kind of illnesses like this is like they really bring out the sicknesses of our society in so many yeah. ways, right? And when, you know, HIV first came out, it was called GRID, Gay-Related Immunodeficiency Disease, I think. So it was considered a gay disease. Only gay people got it, and, you know, that was it. And it was considered that was the way you got it. Of course, we know that you can, it can be transmitted in a variety of ways, but you're right, like, that is really, I mean, they've done a a great job in doing the work on, you know, spreading information around how you can get it um, through blood transfusions, through, you know, needles and all of that. And still, there has been such a stigma on that, and people, you know, think about it in that way, sex, sex, sex. So, I'm wondering how this is going to be. We don't know what's going to happen with this virus. We don't know how people are going to handle it. We don't know if people are staying, you know, shelter in place, if people, what the government is doing or what, if we're getting the correct information. Um, And yeah, so how are we going to be talking about this uh, virus and, um, you know, taking care of one another and sharing information and who's going to be, basically, who's going to be fucked? (laughs) Who's, you know, no pun intended, who's going to be fucked there? Because um, that that was, it was really um, screwed up um, when, when HIV and AIDS hit, it was horrible. You know, the president at that time, Reagan, didn't even speak the words, you know. our lovely president now, you know. Uh, so for a while too, right? He was mm-hmm. and still engages in a lot of racism, but really was just like not our problem, you know. And, and I, again, very similarly, they didn't want to do anything about it until it was too late. And um, also, interestingly, like with HIV, it really took a lot of organizing from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> organizing from a uh, queer community to really bring attention to the issue because it was impacting their communities on so many levels, not just like the illness itself on one side, but the stigma and all the everything that was happening. Um, mm-hmm. And I think about that, I'm like, who, like you're saying, who is this virus going to impact beyond the illness uh, aspects of it? Right. And who is going to have to do the work because it's going to have to be some, it, it will be some marginalized group of people who is just absolutely not enough, right? And they will organize mm-hmm. and try to, uh, yeah, take, take things under control. Mm-hmm. Yes. And us, you know, even talking about this, you know, um, 
talking about this stigma, talking about sex and the stuff that we want to continue talking about, you know, isn't anything new. It's a continuation of like, you know, queers uh, um, doing the work around the HIV and AIDS, you know, when AIDS hit and um, being creative and being resourceful as we always are, you know, as we always are when things like this happen, um, when, you know, and around that time when um, people were trying to be creative around sex and intimacy and stuff and trying to figure things out when information was not, people didn't know anything, you know, they just didn't know anything. And now we have so much more information um, and so much more resources. Um, and so now, as the wonderful resourceful queers that we are, we continue that creativity and legacy of like, okay, this is happening. What do we do now? What do we do now? How do we, you know, um, take care of ourselves as a community? How do we talk about this openly and intentionally? And how do we take, you know, like how do we um, make sure that, that people already at the fucking margins are not pushed even harder? Because we know that's what's going to come. Like we know that's what's going to come, right? Um, yeah. So I'm thinking about that a lot, um, and I'm thinking about, you know, in terms of you know, our own personal stuff, my high anxiety, um, thinking about, you know, I, you were saying before, you said, I thought I was an introvert. And, uh, and I'm thinking, I love being in my home. I love being, but it's something of absolutely completely different when you are, you know, told to stay in your home. And I'm in my home knowing that I get to work and go out later on traveling and doing work. We don't get to do that right now. Right. And so um, my um, I usually am home and I don't talk much to people. And so this is pushing me to do this um, reaching out. Right. <laughs> so it's like if you're a depressed and anxious person, <laughs> it's like a, it's challenging. It's a challenging thing to like dig deep and um, make these, you know, uh, phone calls or texting people or something to uh, make these uh, hangout dates uh, of sorts or be, you know, do things that you haven't done <laughs> in a long time, right? And and then thinking about the these connections um, and, and and bringing it back to like the the sex piece, like what now? Um, what now in this time of you know uh, being indoors um staying in the virus the fear all of it yeah that's uh absolutely and i think for for a lot of people just touch is just so essential right yeah, yeah. touch but having sex or closeness or all of that and for people who are uh, independent poly they live alone uh, have partners or they just mm. have casual sex a time like this and not getting that touch is I, I think about what how is that going to not help anything right um, and right. like in other news interestingly enough I've been listening to um, various shelter in place orders um, I think there was a yeah there was a mayor of new york was talking about you know people should not be white sharing and if we see more than like two people in a car it's going to be an issue but then he said but if you're a, a couple like a real couple like you know a married couple then you, of course like a family that's okay <laughs> and, and as soon as i heard that i just started thinking about where is this going <laughs> Like, where is, uh, who is going to be considered a real, and, and this was, I, I heard that right. the governor too talking about basically how they don't want to see cars full of people. But if you're a real couple, a married couple, or like if you're a married couple walking at the beach, uh, then that's of course okay. Oh, and, it's okay. And so what if, if you're a, tri a triad? <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> so if you're three adults, <laughs> not okay if you don't live together, if you're not married if you're not engaged if you don't look like a couple right if for whatever mm. reason um and again like talking about bigotry in times like this is just how right. how are those sicknesses of defining what legitimate relationships are that's that's coming up right now 
And right, right. I started just thinking about what are we looking at here? Where are we gonna go with um, the whole mm. thing? And just like, like you said, couple privilege is gonna come up, marriage privilege is gonna come up, mm. um, all of those things um, yeah. are gonna be questions that we're gonna have to be dealing with, right? So true. Well, I didn't even think about that, actually. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. You don't watch the news as much. <laughs> No, I am not watching it. It's like, I can't. Yeah. My anxiety is so high. I, I got you to give me little snippets and I have other people to give me snippets because I'm just not ready for it. Because I, 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 I will like spin out. I will spin out. Yeah. I'm, I'm already I'm already up there right now. So I just need to like try to, I'm trying to keep my, my sanity <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's, I don't recommend it really to anyone. <laughs> regardless of anxiety levels mm. uh, no. but yeah so like you were saying we uh, are in the business of sexual liberation and uh, even when times get hard we believe that sex and sexual connection is uh, a fundamental part of our lives and we shouldn't have to put it on the back burner or yeah um, you know forget about it um, thankfully we live in an age where uh, if during the HIV times you were saying how you know phone sex became really popular, yeah, and all forms of distant sex became popular, um, thankfully we live in a time where if not everybody, uh, a lot of people have access to various forms of cyber connection. So um, we want to talk about how that looks like and just bringing more conversation and questions to broadening the scope of digital sex. Yeah, I'm really excited about these conversations because it's like, um, I mean, we have an idea of these things, but I really want to talk a little deeper about them. Um, and um, yeah, uh, really, uh, focus on what what that can look like a little deeper i think we take we talk about the like the 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 philosophy the philosophy a lot of times and i want to dig into that practice a little yeah. more Absolutely. you know i want to dig into that practice because i've been doing that like um i've been doing a lot of that right now because i need it and for me my my sex and my sexual practice my sexual journey is a part of my healing and so in this um, distancing uh, uh, away from, um, you know, fucking or touch or any of that is, it's difficult. It's the difficult time. And so, because I don't, I don't have that choice. I don't have that choice. And so, um, yeah, I've been like um, being very creative. And I, I, I like my creativity. So I, I'd like to share that creativity with the world. <laughs> excited about it so we are going to be <laughs> offering a webinar series um, called no touching cyber fucking while distancing and Yay. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> can you say that again red v can you give that title one more time <laughs> i have to say it again it's called no touching cyber fucking while distancing <laughs> <laughs> and um, this will be, we will give you more information on our social media. It will be a live webinar series, so you can join us with your questions. And um, it will have four parts, uh, and we will be covering a lot of details, uh, practical details, from, you know, what it's like to do sex thing versus phone calls and audio only, or then adding video. Um, to things like uh, Ignacio was talking about love letters, which is a world I'm, I'm really not familiar with. I'm not that kind of a person. <laughs> uh, to like erotic literature and all sorts of kind of erotic, exciting things you can do. Even read with love letters, you don't even need to have internet access. It's, it's, right. it's, a, it's, a, it's a really specific, different, high level kind of fetish that I'm you know, <laughs> starting to appreciate so much. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and then um talking about of course kink and bdsm i think uh so much of kink and bdsm is uh, verbal in a way or involves kind of verbal clues 
uh, that I think it can work really well. But also, it can also, there's so much that's not verbal that can get challenged right. when you're doing cyber, um, cyber fighting. Uh, what else? What else are we going to talk about, Ignacio? Um, power play. And so it's not just about fucking mental stuff, power play. Um, so a lot of fun stuff, how to's, um, story sharing, you know, some experience stuff. So we're going to have a lot of fun with these series. So, um, uh, we're hoping that if you haven't been to our YouTube channel, go sign up and subscribe now um, and tell your friends because we need more people to sign up and and uh, we'll be giving more of these. If you like these, we'll be giving more because I think um, people want to hear more. Uh, people want to hear about these topics um, and um, it's the time. We got the time, right? We got the time. Yeah, we uh, so we're going to provide this. We're going to add to the conversation. We want to add our little piece uh, to yeah. the conversation. Yeah. So, uh, yes, please go to our website, uh, healtoend.org. You can sign up for our newsletter. It comes out last Monday of every month. Uh, also, our social media everywhere is uh, heal to end with the number two. Um, and so please sign up. Go to our social media. Uh, we will be uh, publishing more information about our webinar series. So you can get all the details as to when you can join us and uh, be part of this conversation. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We will be seeing <laughs> everybody very soon. <laughs> all right. All righty. Bye.